We've already seen the relationship between the energy of a particle and the frequency of the equivalent wave. And these are linked by this little value h. So h is what we call Planck's constant. Because we measure energy in joules and frequency in hertz, which is effectively seconds to the minus one, the units for h are going to be joule seconds. And the actual value of this is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. So Planck's constant 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And there must be a way that we can measure this. And, and there is, and actually something that you can do yourselves. And it all comes back to thinking about how LEDs work. So this graph here that shows the IV characteristics of uh, various um, electrical components. If we look at a diode, and it could be a diode or a light emitting di diode, it doesn't really matter. So let's go for an LED. What we find is if there's uh, a negative potential difference, the current it lets through is zero. And there's a certain point uh, at which it suddenly starts to behave as a conductor. So it's basically this kind of one-way valve that only lets current flow in one direction. But the important thing is that there's a certain potential difference or a certain voltage at which it allows current to flow. And this is called the threshold voltage. So this threshold voltage is uh, a value below which uh, no current flow will flow through that diode. And this is really dependent upon the color. And different color LEDs have a different uh, threshold potential difference. What I have here is a, a small uh, circuit board with some LEDs on it. And it's, it's a brilliant piece of kit for testing. So you can do this in, in many other sort of normal ways in the lab. And what I need to do is first of all, plug it in. So I have a, a power source in this case, it's just a power pack with some AA batteries, so I'm just going to pull it off to one side. And you can see I've already got the red uh, LED lit up. Now, to, as I adjust the potential difference, we can see the different colour LEDs come on in, in, in sequence. Now, the important thing is that all of these LEDs are in parallel with one another. And that means if I was to measure the potential difference across them, which I'm going to do using a multimeter, so hopefully you can just uh, see that reading. Uh, as I just uh, use my kind of the dial here to lower that down, what we can see is a potential difference across uh, all of these LEDs. And as I start to increase that, um, we can see that the red LED comes on with a PD of about 1.5 volts. Um, as I keep increasing the potential difference, the, uh, the green one should turn on next. And we see that's a, a threshold voltage of about uh, two volts. Uh, and then finally, the blue turns on last of all uh, at a higher threshold voltage. And what we can do is also test other uh, LEDs here, so perhaps a purple one, perhaps an ultraviolet one, or whatever. And what we can do in all the cases is uh, measure that threshold voltage when the light starts to shine. Here I have a rather sort of shaky diagram to show exactly the same setup. So in here we have our LED, and what we can do is we can use different values of LED. So we maybe have an infrared one, uh, maybe we have red, uh, orange, all the way through till we, till we get to the sort of blue end of that spectrum. So we have different color LEDs, and each of these has a different threshold potential difference. We've got a potential, uh, we've got a, a voltmeter here to have a look at that potential difference. And actually, because it's sometimes uh, a bit hard to tell when the LED is actually lighting up, we have an ammeter, which lets us know when that current starts to flow. Here we have a potential divider circuit um, and some kind of source of EMF. So that's the setup that we need. And what we need to really measure are two things. First of all, we need to measure the, uh, the threshold voltage. But we also need to look at the LEDs and what we need to measure is the wavelength of light they give off. Now there's two ways to do this. First of all, we could use some kind of diffraction grating or maybe a double slit and work out the wavelength directly. But the often uh, what you find is on the packet of LEDs, it will tell you the color of light that they're giving off. And if you know that you've got a red LED, it will give you the wavelength of that light. And if you don't have it on the packet, you can always check it on the internet. So that means we'll have a table of wavelengths and potential differences. Once we have enough resource, what we can do is plot our graph with the threshold voltage on the y-axis and a value of one over the wavelength on the x-axis, which seems a bit weird, but it'll all become clear very soon. Uh, what we can then do is start to plot our data and provided everything goes to plan, what you get is a graph that looks a bit like that. Once you've got the data, you can then maybe work out the gradient and you'll find that the gradient M is equal to the change in y value, which is your threshold voltage, divided by one over the wavelength, uh, which is equal to v divided by one over lambda. 
which is just equal to V lambda. So this is what the gradient actually represents. What's that got to do with anything? How do you find that, use that to find out Planck's constant? Well, what we know is that E is equal to HF, which is equal to HC over lambda. We can therefore say uh, as well that um, the energy is equal to EV. Okay, this time E being the charge on the electron and V being the potential difference. So we can work out the, the energy effectively of those, um, of those photons. So we can therefore say that EV is equal to HC over lambda. Or we can say that V lambda, by just rearranging this, is equal to HC over E. So what I've really done here is I've had a look at the, um, the energy of each of the, the photons given off and looked at how that corresponds to the, the, the wavelength of that light. And by rearranging this equation, by bringing the lambda up and dividing both sides by E, the, the charge on the electron, we can say that V lambda is equal to HC over E. But up here, I said that V lambda is equal to the gradient of that line. So that means that the gradient, M, is equal to HC over E. That means if you work out the gradient, you times it by the charge on the electron and you divide by the speed of light, you will find out the value of H, which is Planck's constant. And this should be, again, a value, I think I said it before, of 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And that's the way that you can work out Planck's constant yourself in the lab.